When I was a boy, I spent many weekends with Grandma Pesia and Grandpa Yitzchak at their farm in central Israel. I have vivid memories of working in the chicken coop. Chickens quacking, the lingering smell. My heart tugged as I helped my grandparents collect their eggs while these little chickens are trapped in their battery cages. Little did I know that they were the lucky ones because they, they were alive. Those chickens were actually part of an industry that currently numbers seven billion layer chickens that lay the 1.3 trillion eggs we consume every year. It's also an industry that depends on separating males from females because, well, male layers, they don't lay eggs, but they're also too scrawny to be of interest to the poultry industry. So every year, we incubate, hatch, and then kill seven billion day-old male chicks. In simple words, all the male layer chicks are killed. I found this practice deeply disturbing. Ever since I set on a journey to make animal husbandry more humane. I formed a serendipitous partnership with a curious and determined neuroscientist, Professor Dani Ofe, using gene editing technology to end killing and maceration. So at Exit, we're using CRISPR technology to create this magic. We developed an automated, non-invasive, pre-incubation detection system that through a quick optical scan looks inside the eggs as they want to get into the incubator and pick up a genetic marker which associates itself only to the male eggs and prevents their entrance into the incubator, allows only the female eggs inside. That foreknowledge prevents the unnecessary incubation, hatching, and killing of seven billion male layers every year. And those male eggs, they just remain eggs, and they can be repurposed and used in other industries. It's not only about saving the lives and the billions of dollars associated with reducing the production cost, but it's also about reducing this industry's carbon footprint. Think about all the electricity that it saves. And it's also about doing the right thing. Germany, France have already banned male chick culling by law, and many countries are following suit. This use of gene editing is also tackling the severe issue of food security and the skyrocketing food cost and allows more people access to egg protein. But there is more to our magic. Through gene editing, we're also creating poultry which is genetically immune to avian influenza. That is a disease that has a mortality rate of 50% which costs us hundreds of millions of dollars every year and also poses a huge risk of human health as it can move from humans, from birds to humans. And again, the food security and food cost. Our groundbreaking technology stems from the 2020 Nobel Prize winning discovery of CRISPR-Cas9 
Applying this innovative tech, we can edit precisely the DNA of humans, of animals, of plants, and of microorganisms with, again, exceptionally high precision. There are umpteen examples of how gene editing can do wonders for all of the above. And here are a few examples. Using gene editing, we can now cure sickle cell anemia, a disease that over 100 million people worldwide suffer from, and it's very painful. Using gene editing, scientists can also edit crops to be disease resistant. You may find it hard to imagine, but some of our most familiar fruits are in danger of extinction. Again, gene editing technology can help tackle this. This banana is showcased at the Museum of Endangered Foods because 70 years ago, a disease almost caused full extinction of the only commercial viable variety at the time, the Gros Michel banana. Today, a similar virus is surfacing, but now, through gene editing, scientists are working on creating immunity against this virus and saving this whole industry and the millions of jobs associated with it. And think about the world without bananas. <laughs> Climate change, food security, they're all on our minds. And we know there is a direct correlation between what we produce, how we produce, and what we consume. What if we were able to improve the symbiotic relationship? Could we help our planet? We can. And it is our duty to do so. Innovative technologies like gene editing can help us tackle some of humanity's most pressing challenges, what the United Nations defined as sustainable development goals, the blueprint for the planet for 2030. They include climate action, responsible consumption and production, and zero hunger. The products that we and others are developing use gene editing to address these very problems. And hey, bold challenges require bold solutions. It is a bold new world. I am inspired by new discoveries and by their potential for global impact. History has shown that when a new technology is introduced, it's often met with skepticism. I get that. But with what we do and others do with gene editing is an example of innovation that benefits really everyone, humans, animals, plants, and the planet. I have great confidence in the scientific community's ethical judgment and restraint. I believe in society's moral fiber and in the guardrails that legislators and regulators around the world are placing. Technologies such as gene editing offer tools of innovation that address these challenges, and we should not fear technology. We should embrace innovation like gene editing with both hands, because our future and our planet depends on it. I do feel confident that Grandma Pesya and Grandpa Yitzhak would embrace our technology to end chick culling, humanize food production, and better our planet. Thank you. Yeah.